This is Food for Thought with Deborah Walker. Hi everyone, I'm Deborah Walker. This is Food for Thought and I have the lovely Nancy Finch on with me today. She's a Reiki master. Indeed. And what, what makes a Reiki person become a master? That is going to be one of my questions, I have to say. Hi Nancy, how are you? Hi, yeah. Uh, <laughs> ah, right, good question. What makes a, make, a Reiki master become a Reiki master is because they have to really start with themselves. Um, a person starts to develop their own sense of well-being and emotionally and physically they have to take responsibility for that. So most people start on level one where people are responsible for that just for themselves. Um, and so you work through that process of making ourselves stronger and happier and, you know, uh, much fitter and whatever conditions drawn us to that um, therapy in the first place usually gets fixed. And so we then go on to wanting to help other people. So Reiki 2 is a natural progression. And then when you go through that process of helping other people, you're developing yourself again on a different level and moving into a new whole field of inspiring other people with their well-being. And then when you've done that for a little bit, (laughs) you end up sort of feeling that it's just natural to teach it. And so the teacher's level runs alongside with a higher level of um, Reiki 3. And so you end up teaching it, inspiring people, um, helping them on all levels. So that's just one thing I do, and that's what's brought me into learning about chakras and then developing myself from that point. And it's been a progressional thing. So chakra, learning about those chakras and how they affect our bodies and what emotional you know, cause has caused them to shut down or open has led me then to write a book and to do other related things. And, you know, I was just about to say, tell my audience about your background to how you've become a Reiki master and holistic therapy because it doesn't just stop as you've just kind of touched on there it doesn't stop at just the Reiki does it that no. of the bits and pieces that you do because you are very widely trained aren't you yes and mostly from my own motivation I've I really believe that people should learn from themselves go into the reasons why they're feeling what they're feeling and then move themselves from that place into a healthier place and that's emotionally most, I mean, everything is emotionally based, as most of us know. But um, we can work from a general place and then go deeper and deeper at our own pace, really. So, and it's all cognitive, it all links with each other. And you usually find the person comes to see you that is ready to, to deal with that. And uh, everyone's a mirror to each other. So all my people I see are generally mirrors of either validation or, or growth, you know. <laughs> it's lovely. So what's the journey that you've taken to become... The, her, the therapist that you've, you are today um, in regards to all the different aspects of therapies and why you've trained to do them? Well, um, it sort of started about 14 years ago. Um, it started before that, really. I was always very intuitive and always using my, you know, my intuitive skills on, on things like I was a child minor for many, many years. And I love that. Um, but I wasn't really trained in anything holistically until I started um, doing body massage um, at the local college in St. Austell. I did massage, uh, aromatherapy, reflexology, Indian head massage, and all this sort of thing, diploma in anatomy physiology. Um, I also did psychology, and psychology is one of my favorite things. And so I wanted to know the reason why people were sick. And when I, I myself got sick a few years ago, about eight years ago, I had severe tendinitis, and the doctor said I'd never work again. It was that bad that he said, you know, you're, you're like a cripple now. You cannot move. You can't get another job. And I wasn't really unhappy, especially that I just had complimentary therapist of the year award at the college, and everything seemed to be bright and beautiful. And I, you know, I was being rewarded for everything that I'd put myself into. Suddenly, to be discovered, both my arms wouldn't work, and that I wasn't going to be able to do what I loved doing. So I took myself to a Reiki person who was working with me at a center, a local center, and although I didn't really understand what Reiki was, um, I thought I'd try it. It was a last resort, and it was what actually fixed me. Overnight, I could move. I realized, even in a a short treatment, that I was able to uh, fix very quickly, and it was enabling my body to heal on a deeper level. So emotionally, a few things come up as well, and I was dealing with those. So I could see how powerful and how gentle this beautiful... Um, therapy was so she attuned me that taught me reiki one and from that point onwards i then progressed and it was a very quick progression um moving up to different levels and then alongside that working with color sound and other related things all time beautifully with that particular therapy so that's how i wrote my book and i do um color card readings on people which reflect 
at a subconscious level the imbalance uh, possible low va- low imbalance of a person's body so uh, they're literally having seven colors um, chakra colors moving up from the red to the purple and they would choose subconsciously so I set the intention that a person is going to choose uh, as quickly as possible without thinking of their favorite color and then they'll just as they choose the colors they'll have an order and at the last three or four cards are the ones that we really need to work on there's those areas of the body and emotional areas of the body especially is what I read back to them and I only do this to empower them with the result we want to change so I identify reform and empower and that's what I do through every single thing I do but the card readings really do help one to focus the Reiki treatments onto those particular areas of the body and the emotions and secondly to empower the person so they can then take some responsibility and help themselves after the treatment to prolong the effect so I will give affirmations out to help positive affirmations to help undo some of the negative um, feelings and thoughts that have caused those conditions in the first place so and I've had some major results with people with very serious conditions so after a few years of doing that and giving those um, affirmations out and then the readings would change when they returned to me and their conditions would be better, um, I then decided to put that into a book. Having seen the results and proved the results to be effective, I thought I'll then put that into a small book called Soul Affirmations. And these are a collection of 70 affirmations, 10 for each area of the body, and they have been proven to be work, you know, effective and work on each area really well so people like the book just anyway because it's beautiful to read positive words but it's very good for the person on a physiological level and 97 percent of our brain is subconscious so it is being absorbed on that level and if you like it rewrites the program that's caused the condition in the first place i I did find your book really fascinating i left it on the um not only in the corner of my house, but also where you, where you kind of walk mm. in. Also, um, I would take it to the uh, clinic with me over the last few weeks. Oh, good. And, um, everybody, I have to say, it looks um, like it, I've had it for about 10 years. <laughs> it really oh. does at the moment. You'll need, you'll need new copies then. <laughs> well, it's fascinating uh, because oh. so many people have opened it. And just gone. Oh, that's absolutely right for me at the moment. As they've kind of gone, gone either come in, either in or out. Yeah. And, and I just found it fascinating the energy that seemed to be around your little book. Well, that was it exactly. I I reiki I reiki the um, the highest effect for everybody that opens the book. So even if you were to hold the book, you'd feel better. And the image on the front of the book, as you remember, it's on my coaster as well. The, they both the image itself is. Um, is infused with energy to open up each one of those chakra points in your body. So even if you held the book the con- and you didn't understand English or anything, you know, if you didn't understand it and never even read it, you would still feel the energy coming from the book. And it's an interesting experiment people can use either with the book or the coaster, is that if you put a drink or food, especially drinks because it's easier to monitor, but if you were to have a drink on this image, put a drink of water or anything else you'd like on there, and another similar drink, you put it to the side of it, away from the book, you'll find after five minutes the molecules of the drink, of the, of the fluid that's on the book, that's held in the glasses, will actually will change and form, uh, as if anyone's ever seen or heard of Mitsuru Emoto, he would show the photographic evidence, but it would expand the evidence, the um, energy in your cells. So you would have a positive effect in each one of those chakra areas because of the concepts in the book and because of the energy held within those words and concepts. So it has an amazing effect. People should try it. It does work. It's very, very strange, but it does work. <laughs> well, it's not so strange, is it, really? Because, no. you know, when you, when you think about what you're doing and the science now supports it, it exactly. meant that actually um, you can see how you can change the molecular structure. That's and right. the likes of Bruce Lipton show this, Candice Pert show this, you've referred to Masuo Emoto. They, they are clearly showing that you can change the molecular structure, not only of your own body with your thoughts, but other people's. Now, you know, you've got the likes of Gerald Pollock, who, mm. you know, who effectively, he shows, he works with water, and he shows that, you know, he talks about how the infrared alters the molecular structure <laughs> of water. And... <laughs> 
fundamentally we are predominantly water and we give yeah. off infrared because we are we are Fantastic. absorbing it from the sun so there's mm. other science there as well there's it's now backing it all up exactly you know people people are now waking up to this i think a couple of years ago when our pineal glands woke up every single person became more intuitive um and the, the earth's vibration changes um we are all naturally having more intuitive dreams we're, we're more telepathic we understand a lot more of that sort of area of our lives are starting to wake us up <laughs> so i went to see masura moto last year in uh, dundee and it was at world peace day as i say and i managed to have a good spent the whole day with him and helped him do um there was a uh, an impromptu sort of meditation in the square in there and it was pouring with rain so it was perfect because all the water was everywhere and we did this water meditation on um like a flash mob sort of situation where we were dragging people in to sort of get involved and it was perfect it was a really lovely event and you could feel the energy and you know the whole place is buzzing with this beautiful positivity masuri is an absolutely amazing man um i've also met david hamilton he's similar he's a scientist he's a pharmaceutical scientist or he certainly was and then he moved into being you know a person who's written some fantastic books um the choice uh, he did um oh several he's on four i'm just trying to think of it's the thought that counts was the very first one he ever did and that has actually got so much proof as to what we were just saying so it all cognitively knits together doesn't it you know they, these are wonderful people um i met john c parkin who's written a fantastic book um this book is to release the pressure in people's emotions and consequently their mind their bodies as well um and this book is called fuck it and it's called the spirit the ultimate spiritual way <laughs> and <laughs> it is a very amazing book it's it's unlike i mean people look at the title and think oh my goodness i'm not saying that but when you consider the way he puts it over he shows the physical and the emotional benefits of releasing all the pressure that we put on ourselves in that area so you know in in a, and and daily lives put a lot of pressure on ourselves and if we if we wish to absorb it that's you know we have a choice um i'm going to be doing uh and the process of collecting information for a second book i'm going to write and the book is going to be called the choice is mine and it's a, it's my baby really i've got four books i wish to write but this is really the book that i wish to inspire people on a deeper level with some emotional exercises that fix at a deeper level of cell cell um healthy you know healthy cells mm-hmm. i want people to be feeling more sort of clear of more of imbalance and to be aware of that imbalance and to hopefully take responsibility for it with simple exercises and awareness and it is about the whole taking responsibility isn't it it is it is i mean we all go to people as mirrors to help ourselves you know we go to a therapist to to perhaps be in you know showing the way that we need to be looking at ourselves or to take responsibility so people generally want to do this but you know i deal with a lot of people and not everybody will take away the homework and do the homework because they think they've done that little bit for themselves and that's it but people have to be made aware or or to be reminded of that there's an awful lot of programming that we've experienced up to now and the feelings and thoughts that have demoralized our well-being you know and that 97% of our subconscious is holding on to all those things that that although we might be positive on the 3% that we're talking about now you know we're aware of we might be positive and 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 um very clear minded about what we want to do and we're we're, we're very f- uh, motivated to change our lives but that 97% must be dealt with and so we go to pay people to help us to identify those things that are holding us back not everyone is ready at the same time but you know it's all it's all relative i think if they can take even a um a couple of uh ideas away with them then that itself will have a process of of change so it's lovely you can't i think everyone's a winner i think as long as people are willing to at least not be close to an idea just it's all multi- really it's down to fear people a lot of people are frightened to change their lives even though they want to you know i remember seeing a lady once and and i offered i used to work in par market as well i had a little <laughs> stall there so i thought i'd introduce it to the general public you know they go and buy their socks they can go and have a, a reiki treatment as well <laughs> <laughs> it was very unusual i met a lot of beautiful people down at it's absolutely down at the stall it was a it's the only holistic stall in the whole of the county of Cornwall, as far as I know. I mean, I may be wrong, but as far as I know, that's it. Um, but there is, um, uh, I trained a lady to take over from me because I had to get out and do the shows and do a bit more of the, you know, talks, inter- inspirational talks, which is what I do quite a lot of. Um, and, yeah, it was fantastic. And quite a lot of people hadn't even seen 
or had any experience at all of holistic um, therapies, and I was able to offer them mostly the Reiki, but, you know, reflexology and other things, you know, certainly to inspire them with a new way of thinking, which is really where I like to go now. Um, I still work one-to-one with people, and I do all sorts of uh, workshops, you know. Uh, the workshops, I've just done one last weekend, actually, um, and that was an inner child workshop. Mm-hmm. And that was brilliant. It was so much fun. And, of course, that's just ourselves, again, taking that word, getting into responsibility of connecting with that vulnerable sense of ourselves, that little six-year-old that's always with us, the person that we need to look after, so that we no longer put so much pressure on the outside of ourselves, in, generally in our relationships and you know, we can learn to support ourselves and not expect everyone to support us, you know. And we get disappointed when we tend to look outside and people let us down here or there, family, friends. And what we really need to do is to learn to be a parent to ourselves. And that's where the real growth, that's where people start to make their own metaphoric cakes and all their relationships become the icing on it. So fundamentally, they're feeling safer, they're feeling more secure, they trust themselves. People are generally happier. You know, so that's just one workshop I do, and that was really successful. So I'm running those on roughly about once a month or so, um, alongside the Cosmic Order workshops. And they're brilliant as well, Law of Attraction. So I've been doing those for years. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love teaching that. I absolutely love teaching and I love inspiring people and oh it's just it's just the most amazing feeling to to know. See I've had a very challenging life, um and, and all the challenges I've had to go inside myself to learn the, or to, to find the antidote to those feelings and, and to literally get myself into a higher ground. So to be able to inspire anybody else is a complete delight. You know, it's just what I'm here for. It's what I, you know, I think all the, all the stimulus that I've had to grow from has been absolutely um, well worth it. And, and talking about that word responsibility again, I absolutely um, i am happy to say I'm fully responsible for um, ordering that on another level so as everyone you know people would know about their karmic gifts and i've ordered uh the stimulus to grow from so that i would be able to share that growth with other people it's brilliant you know uh and that's another story really isn't about ordering things people say, well, i don't order this and i don't order that but anybody has seen the secret or you know by Rhonda Byrne yeah. if anyone's seen that or had any experience of understanding what we call to ourselves we are doing this to learn and to grow from so I'm really happy with what I've um, developed and experienced up to now <laughs> well do just explain the order in a bit more because I, I, it is it is very difficult for people to understand when they are not getting the lifestyle, particularly in the current environment, economic yeah. environment. Yeah. Um, you know, people will feel that actually um, this is happening to them, yeah. and there is a movement, and there's a there's a very different mindset amongst people like ourselves, where we feel that actually you can have what you want, and you, you can. can create yes, what you, you can. want in this life. Yes, you and that can. Comes back to the energy that you're creating around. Yes, you. it's all about the emotional energy. Now, if you consider, it's like like a wattage, what you're giving out. You know. Um, if you think about it, if a child, like a childlike energy, we'll go back to child for a second, a childlike energy is full in that moment, okay? It's, it's um, I, I don't know, it, it's basically inspirational. The child will come in and it's playing and it's happy and it, it inspires other people around. That wattage, if you like, in the child is very high. When we're on, perhaps we're on holiday as adults and we're really, we've got no worries, we're really high and happy. Have you noticed that when you're in that kind of place of, um, you relax happiness, you're in like 100 watts and you attract a really good day. Children attract lucky things to happen to them. When people are in a high place, they attract a higher um, return. So if you're in a low wattage place like worry, say we're worried about money or relationships or something, you know, that low watt place is like a 20 watt bulb. It's not shining a very bright light. And all you're going to do is attract by the law of attraction more of the 20 watt things. So people wonder why, and a good example of this is if you wake up in the morning, you stub your toe and, and or you sort of think you come downstairs and something else is wrong and, and your, your car's got a puncture and you think, oh, it's going to be one of those days. And of course, what you've done is affirm to your 97% subconscious, that's what it's going to be, and you'll help create that. So if you were to think, okay, all those things happened, and then you were to say by choice, 
um, actually, I'm deciding to have a 100-watt day here. That might have happened then, but I'm drawing a line through it, and I'm going to be the complete opposite. I'm going to be, um, I'm having a fantastic day. I've got more than enough energy, and I can easily pay my bills, and my relationships are fantastic. Yes, you're lying to yourself in the reality that you've created or experiencing up to now, but the point is, if you could just Go with the feeling, and it's the feeling is where the energy is. If you can go to the feeling and produce that feeling of satisfaction and having that, whatever it is you desire, then you actually, by the law of attraction, attract it into your life. And you are having a much higher um, effect. You know, basically, you're doing three things. You're helping your own body by um, telling it something positive. So, therefore, your energy inside your body in all those areas that I, spent, I spoke of earlier will be your main battery especially will feel more energy. Um, secondly, uh, you are feeling in control because you've changed something. You've done an action, you know. You're either saying it, you're speaking it, you're writing an affirmation. You're experiencing it. Um, so, you'll feel better for that as well. That affects the main uh, solar, plex- solar plexus energy in your body and then by the law of attraction because you've had those feelings of satisfaction for more than 17 seconds and that's all it takes to attract and lock it into a higher level of attraction you can then uh, bring it to you so if you consider uh, 17 seconds is part of um, an an instruction an intention and you let go of that intention you just presume that you're going to have it So, I mean, I do all-day workshops on cosmic ordering, so it's much more than just a feeling. You have to get yourself into that feeling, and that's the hardest bit, like you just suggested. But once you can play with that, and I'm saying play because it's uh, an interesting thing. Once you start experiencing it with no pressure and you don't try too hard, you know, you start to relax into perhaps I'll pretend I have this. Or I, it starts with dreams, really. Identify what's not going on, what you don't want in your life. Dream about something you do want. And while you're dreaming about it, experience it. Hmm. Really feel it. If you want to go on holiday, feel the sun on your face. You know, whatever it is you want to feel, really get into the feeling. On all of those senses, if possible, just imagine. And if you hold that for 17 seconds, I would do it a bit longer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure you do it for about a minute, really. It's more fun. And then you actually attract, by the law of attraction, You must let go of it, by the way. If you keep wanting something, that's also a low vibration. You can't want it. You must experience it, expect it, let go of it. But when you do have whatever it is you've ordered or wanted, you know, originally, whatever you desired, if once that comes to you, you must be extremely um, grateful for it because, you see, gratitude is one of the strongest things to attract good things back into your life, and it's also very, very good for your immune system. So it's been proved by lots of people that when you're grat- when you're in a great gratitude place, you are going to um, be healthier and happier and live longer, etc. You know, I'm a great fan of Wayne Dyer, and he's one of the, the guys that always writes. He does lots of stories and helps people to become responsible. And I think he's one of the wisest men I've ever ever listened to or been inspired by. Um, and I plan to see him one day. I've seen the others I admire, but, but Wayne Dyer is just amazing. And he, he talks about how we should just um, choose to be. I mean, he's had a hard life as well. Most, most people choose to have a hard stimulus to grow from, and then they grow into people that inspire others. So, you know, Wayne Dyer is just one of those people that explain my principles, how you can have a choice. You know, one day I came, I, I came downstairs and I was in a really, it doesn't happen very often to me. I'm a very positive person by choice. But one day I came downstairs and it was, it was a really, really horrible day and everything had gone wrong and I had no work and all the money had gone and oh, it was one of those really low, low vibrations. I haven't had one of those for years. So on a scale of one to 10, if you were to say how one being low and 10 being happy, I was literally zero and I'd never had you know, I'm not happy to have that feeling. So I decided I would take responsibility for this. And this is a, a couple of years back. And so I found myself using sound with affirmations. And it's the sillier you are with it, the better it is. In a sense, it's, it becomes, it lightens you. You know, like when you're having a good laugh with somebody, you suddenly feel lighter. Well, I started dancing around the kitchen, singing everything's going to be all right. And putting in sentences of all the opposites of what I felt was a problem. So the car wasn't working. So I would say, the car, you know, my car's working, and then burst into song with everything's going to be all right, and started dancing around the kitchen. 
Well, in, in about 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes, I remember sort of giggling, thinking this is ridiculous. It's great feeling. But anyone looking through the door or window would think I had gone mad. <laughs> But I felt amazing, and I, nothing had changed. Nothing on the outside of my life had changed. Nobody had fixed any of those things, but I felt better in my body. I felt better in my mind. And when you feel better in your mind, you are clearer. You sort of lift like a balloon moving up. You suddenly can see more, and the solutions that you are looking for come to you because you're in a clearer mind and because you're in a happier place. So your wattage is higher. So what I ended up doing is just these ideas would just pop into my head, you know, ring so and so your car, you know, about your car, and it turned out by the law of attraction there was nothing wrong with the car after all, and so all these <laughs> things I wanted started to manifest throughout that day, and I ended up having one of the best days I've ever had, and that came from a zero point to a ten point, and all because I decided to change it, and so you have to. Have a bit of a game with yourself. Lie to your mind. Tell yourself you have the things you don't have. Um, because what you're doing is you're giving hope. You're giving a feeling of, of possibility when you're first doing that. And that's why the affirmations I've written in the book are so powerful because they're all the solution if you're to just, just invest a little bit of feeling into them. And it's that changes this 97% of your mind in your subconscious into a place of possible change you're rewriting the program you're making yourself you're giving yourself the opportunity to in uh to manifest those things but the hardest bit for most people is just is effectively telling themselves they have something they haven't because they're trapped in the reality that that one we've created and two are told we have to keep so it's a new it's the reason why uh, cosmic ordering works so well is if you can use your emotional energy um and to get into it in a childlike way and then let go of it that's the most important thing not to crave it i've got hundreds of stories where i've decided to have something you know a um, <laughs> new car or, or a white piano given to me free of charge i don't know you name it, i've got thousands of them and i just make that decision invest in the feeling and let go of it and know it's coming just like a pizza order but you know <laughs> well you say that but i you know i have what's called my magic whiteboard yeah. And I know that if I put something on there, it happens. Absolutely. And, um, you know, one day one of the kids put um, a horse on there. I got very scared about that because I don't have <laughs> a space for a horse. Yeah, absolutely, honestly. <laughs> we're like, whoa. Um, I love it. You know, but actually I do a call at the magic whiteboard um, because things. Because are, it is. It yeah. is. It, and it, because it's almost in my psyche from that moment onwards. I get excited about it. I experience exactly. it. And I know because it's about the excitement is a high wattage, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the fact is, because once it works once or twice, you know, the little things that you've put on that board, the more you're going to get because you expect it to, you trust it, because you've seen some evidence. So at heart, the, first, the hardest bit is to first use this concept, like when you first got the board, and after that, it becomes easy, doesn't it? Or easier. <laughs> well, you have, to, you have to have the experience of it happening. And once you, once you experience that and you understand that it is the whole, you, 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 you gain the experience about your body, and then yeah. you have to let it go and not yeah. attach yourself to it. And, yeah. and the, once, you are, once you've got that understanding, it can almost become quite easy. I know a couple it of years is. ago... <laughs> um, I had a friend who phoned me up in a bit of a state and we'd been having this play with what can we manifest. And actually, we'd been not so much worrying about what we could get, but actually more about the, getting the time scale down and how fast we could actually, because I'm an Aries, yes. very competitive, yes. and I always want to see how fast <laughs> things can happen. Yeah. And he'd thought about getting a sofa. This was on Christmas Day morning. Yeah. And, and thought, oh, he'd, he'd sat down and gone, oh, I wouldn't mind a, a new sofa. <laughs> and literally, he, one of his family turned up and said that they were giving away their more or less new sofa. Absolutely. <laughs> and <laughs> he was on the phone saying, mm. I'm really shocked at what's happened. Absolutely. That's <laughs> and, because he just thought it was a sofa. If it was something mm. bigger, he might not have been able to, you know, your subconscious sometimes interferes with that. Mm. But because you think it's just a sofa, it's brilliant. And what, what colour was it? Um, it's a white one. It's a white one. Did you think about the colour before you ordered? I have no idea. I never got into that conversation. No. We were more laughing about the fact that <laughs> he'd thought about it that morning and literally within about oh. two and a half hours he'd actually gained himself Brilliant. a new sofa. And Brilliant. Uh, from my side of it, I was more concerned about the fact that he'd beaten my fastest score in, in ordering. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes 
people that have never done it before are really successful straight away if they just they just think oh I'll give that a go mm. and because they're not thinking about it too much it works I mean I, everything in my home is cosmic ordered and I, I've done the sofa as well I wanted a red sofa I wanted it to be really comfortable free of charge of course you know mm. it was just a game I was playing because the harder the, the order the better it is mm. you know I've done it with a car and it's like a pizza order you put all the details in it and as soon as you've got your details you can think, well, I've done that now. It's just like, just like you've just ordered a takeaway. And so you, it's fantastic with the sofa thing. It really is. If people don't get their orders, it's only usually because they're thinking too much about it or it carries too much weight. Yeah. You know, if it's something really important, like they're after their house and they really must have this house or whatever it is they want, it tends to carry a lot of emotional weight. And it's it's linked in with all their security and their other feelings as well so we've got to shrink that down to a non-important thing i mean people can do it with car spaces you know i've always got my same space in asda i mean that car space is always there for me (laughs) (laughs) and i imagine it's always going to be there or anything else i want on and that's how you start you start with tiny things but it's not about always getting your way it's about pushing the easy button like you sort of suggested if you can push the easy button in life, then you have so much more energy to manifest for yourself and others. And it isn't just about having material things. It's about feeling good. Yeah. And that feeling good inspires other people that you're around, like sunshine in a room. Yeah. And you find yourself to be uh, a person that people want to be with. Um, and you can end up, you know, just as I say, inspiring them to be just by example, because you're happy, you're healthier, and they become influenced by that. You know, certain collective consciousness, of course, as you take responsibility for your own happiness, you know, you're actually helping other people. Um, It's just joining with the other collective energy and people will wonder why they suddenly feel great, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Now, everyone I meet nowadays seems to be doing Reiki. And uh, I have to say, including lots of my clients who are showing up. And um, why is this the case? Is it just that, uh, you know, the Reiki therapists are really good at actually marketing themselves? Or is that, what (laughs) what do you think is the reason that most people seem to be tuning into the likes of kind of the therapies which are linked with Reiki? Yeah, well, because Reiki is one of the easiest things they can do for themselves. I mean, the, you can learn it in an afternoon. You can you can readjust your own levels, your own body levels, very quickly. I I mean, I actually do spend only a couple of afternoons. You know, it's probably about sort of ten hours on the first first level. Um, but they can do it straight away, and because it's so evident, and they haven't got to um, make too much of it. They haven't. I've taught children. I've, the youngest person I've taught has been eleven, um, and I've taught probably about 250 i've lost count i don't i my i just won't i've got it in a book but i won't consciously think about how many because that's just connected to ego and nothing more but so i i basically have done a lot of teaching and some of the younger people i mean they don't always want to read books they can if they want to but it's the tuning into themselves it's taken that again responsibility but then it's the self-nurturing thing and reiki is a very gentle it's like it's very womb-like. And so people end up going back and becoming more of themselves from the comfort and the support that they get from that beautiful energy, not just fixing them on a physical level, but comforting them on a really deep level so that they can become more. They feel the security and trust in themselves to expand whatever they need to be, you know. So in every area, every therapist, realizes that it's kind of a cleansing and and a battery if you like to to move them forward you know it it motivates them naturally and gently at the pace that the body and the mind is ready to go with so it will make you more uh, effective in everything you're doing so it doesn't matter what job you're doing um if people do learn reiki it'll become easier um i i teach a lot of artists my daughter's an artist and when i attuned her she she produced more art beautiful art that shines in energy um in fact she's the one that did the the cover of the book so and that's why people she knew what i wanted to do with that and i um reiki the image but she was very good at at producing that image because she's been reiki attuned um so she becomes more intuitive with herself and whatever she's trying to do so and there's lots of people like the children i said about they have one one person I'm thinking of in particular used to have a problem of being bullied, and she was only 11. You know, she had she was very very um, sensitive, 
And when I attuned her, instantly she no longer had this bullying is- uh, issue going on because it increased her confidence. It made her feel uh, more the way she should be, really. A sense of being was, was bigger. So she no longer attracted anyone to bully her so it helped on that level and it helped on lots of physical levels as well that she needed it so the reason why people are instinctively going towards reiki is because it isn't a very easy and very gentle uh way of rebalancing and um, amplifying themselves they know this on an intuitive level I, i teach a lot of doctors and doctors themselves have that cognitive understanding of the body um um, but they are they are now aware of the fact, as they always have been, that their emotions uh, does have an effect on the body. That's why doctors would send people home so they get better because they're in a happier environment. But now they're learning how they can use that Reiki for themselves and understanding of others. And I know one doctor that likes to offer Reiki as well as his services, you know, um, as, he's, as, a, as a doctor. So it's brilliant. The whole world is waking up to an intuitive side of themselves. And Reiki just seems to be available um, at the right time. I think it's all just there to help people. Um, I always think that Reiki is a bit like dropping a a quartz crystal into a person or yourself. And that quartz crystal amplifies and allows you to shine brighter. So, And as you're doing that, the world itself, as I say, is is evolving. So um, the more people that are doing that, the more Reiki will become more accessible because of its very nature. You know, it's like snowdrops in a field. They just spread. So as one person experiences Reiki, we'd like to know about it. There's got to be at least one in ten now that if you talk to anybody in the street would know about Reiki or understand about energy. So it becomes a very logical thing to go to. Well, people people know when somebody walks in the room and they don't like them and if you yes. you know yeah. so they do understand energy but yes. when you start to talk about it on a healing level this is where it starts to kind of mm-hmm. you know you, the past yeah. the past can divert effectively yes, it, can. it can also be affected by what their schema is what they've what they've experienced up to now they might associate the word healing with religion and it isn't it's, it's separate although it can be used with people that are using religion absolutely um, but it's also it's what we get taught and what we've experienced in our in our culture in our background in our parents um we might have heard a word that puts us off something you know they might just hear energy work and think we're all tree huggers you know (laughs) (laughs) i do work on trees by the way (laughs) but it's not the point it's uh basically people can can be um influenced and inhibited with their their freedom of trying something new because of the, the old experiences from someone else or what they've been told or what the media says. or it, But really, underneath all that, it doesn't really matter because, you know, as Wayne Dyer would say, one, one positive person in amongst a hundred negative would still have more energy, uh, a higher vibration of energy and far more effect on that environment than the hundred. So you can consider, even though we're a small minority in the sense of there's more doctors than there's all other, other therapists and, you know, doing different things. Um, we are still, whoever wants to work on themselves, whether they use Reiki or not, is having a huge effect on everyone. It's, it, it's important. This is where the, you know, where you're saying about um, the Masuru um, and, you know, the Bruce Liptons of this world. Yes. This is where it, it, this energy and this focus does start to not only change us at a cellular level, but also the molecules of other people around us. It so. does, it does. And, you know, Wayne Dyer would say it travels hundreds of miles, you know, uh, depending on how much vibration you have within yourself, it can actually affect um, a, a lot of the area that you're in. I mean, I, I do sometimes do talks for schools and I was talking to a lot of teachers And I would say, you know, I said to them, you don't put poison in your tea. Why would you think a thought that demoralizes your body and makes it into sort of a a, a lesser state than it needs to be? And, of course, you're affecting all the children. So I I put a lot more than that. Uh, You know, it's a very concise talk, but they seem to get the idea that they are affecting the children and they are affecting the children's, you know, what they learn, et cetera, et cetera. So if we could take responsibility for ourselves, um, teachers have a tough job and it's not easy for them. So it's important that they do get support with their feelings, you know, so that they can affect their children and, and our children a lot better. So, yeah, people around will take that. If you put it in a logical place, you know, you don't put poison in your tea. Why would you think a thought that demoralizes you and, and then affects others? So when you start to sort of look at it that way, you think, well, okay, I will, I will choose to, choose, 
would be different within myself and that is going to not only help me physically or emotionally it's going to help everyone around me but and by the law of attraction of course if you're choosing to be happier and healthier even in a mind and it's not in reality you will attract it and you will then start to see the magic of how much more you can have in life as bruce limpton says in his in his latest book um, the honeymoon effect he talks about how we can our hearts have our own independent magnet if you like to other like-minded people you know he doesn't say that quote word for word but this is what he's implying um he is a good example of showing the physiological changes that happen to us when we meet somebody like you say who lights up the room who doesn't you know we are affected by those people but ironically we are also uh, attracting those people we make though we are um, experiencing ourselves through others that's what we do this is coming from myself um, and many other people would agree with this this theory but we are all mirrors. So if something good happens to you, it's because you're in a good place. If somebody judges you, or you suffer road rage, or something happens on the outside of you that you're not sure, and I don't like that feeling, well, immediately, if it was me, I would take it back to myself and think, well, why am I judging myself? Because we're only getting a mirror image of whatever we are feeling ourselves, certainly what we think about ourselves. And, of course, bringing it back to ourselves again, if we could give ourselves more value, more self acceptance etc etc then we're less likely to attract it from outside it's interesting isn't it in regards to it's an industry um the one that we work in which is high women it actually attracts predominantly women to it to, yeah. um, and then you're talking about value and i know from working um with with, with high numbers of women actually they are the gender that don't value themselves yes often. right yes it was sensitive we're very you know we get and also we, we get taught all the way down through our parents 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 etc you know it's a subconscious thing that's sort of going on down there we watch it all the time you know we we will give up our power without realizing it and it takes quite a lot for women to get that back and they might not even realize they're giving it up and so it's it's an interesting thing once you start to look at how you are with yourself I mean, how many women, I mean, men find this difficult as well, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of people. I mean, I'm a therapist all day long, so this is something I've been able to measure. But how many, if I was to say to anybody, write a list of 20 things you like about yourself, most people would find that most, most, you know, quite difficult. You know, you're not allowed to ask anybody. You're supposed to write this list about yourself. So something of a celebration list, a value list of yourself. Um, This is just one exercise that really does help to um, change your sense of value and how other people value you in, in, in turn because if you value yourself then so will other people so if you could I mean it's a good exercise to do it took me over a week the first time I tried it and I, I left mm-hmm. it on the table and I kept going back to it and I couldn't look at it because at the time I had low, very low self-worth very low self-esteem um, no, no self-confidence whatsoever this is a woman who couldn't even drive up the county without freaking I had no confidence to try anything new and this, cha- this is just one of the small things that changed me. So I went to do this exercise of value list, and it took me over a week to write the 20, and I certainly couldn't read them. And part of me was saying, well, isn't that big-headed, or isn't that something, you know, you can't say that? Is that real? Is that true? And so I folded the list, and I put it away. And about uh, a couple of months later, I decided to do it again, just to see how long it would take me. And to my surprise... I could do that list within about five minutes mm. because then it was simply a stop check of what I had taken, um, uh, what I wanted to be or what I chose to be or celebrate. So it was like sort of a stop check of how many tins of beans you've got in the cupboard. Since seriously, it was just about who have you developed yourself to be? Who are you, you know? And it's at, the, at that particular self-worth is usually depending on what we're doing with our families or our work and if we haven't got work quite a lot of the time people would suffer low self-worth or or value because of whatever they haven't got or they might feel the hierarchy in the family they may not feel as if they're of any worth and to my surprise a lot of children have this i've done a lot of interviewing with children and quite a lot of them uh feel low self-worth they don't feel they're important you know and and so this is something we can all change and it's never too late. I teach adults how to teach their children how to do self-value games. You know, there's uh, certain things that I can do that's more physical. You know, the dominant hand counts on the left 
hand, the left dominant hand, um, five things every day that you celebrate. Well done, me list, you know? And then you clap your hands and you hold your hands together. And what this is, is a celebration and a feeling of control and appreciation over your world and controlling the little things that you do, feeling a sense of trust and safety in your world, and certainly being able to trust yourself to be enough. And that's just so many different things you can do to help yourself on that level. <laughs> Most people say things to themselves that they would never say to other people, don't they? That's right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we put ourselves down constantly and we do it in our language and something that becomes then subconsciously reinforced every time. And your brain believes all of it. So if you say, oh, I'm no good at that, and you find yourself criticizing yourself, um, you're actually reinforcing it. And, you know, the first time I ever really got rid of that from my, my consciousness was when I made up this thing called the sticks. And basically, every time you catch yourself criticizing yourself or saying anything negative at all about yourself, um, then, and that might be in the mirror, it might be about what you do, it might be about how you are or what you've done wrong, that's a stick. And you're poking your little inner child, she's only six, and you're poking that person, that vulnerable self, and you're saying that you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're generally doing when we're criticizing ourselves. And when I first did this, I noticed I was breaking about, because you're supposed to break the stick, metaphorically, and then say the corrective sentence um and lightheartedly of course but a lot of us take ourselves very seriously and at that time i found myself to be breaking at least 30 sticks a day and i thought oh my goodness i'm no good at this and of course that was another stick (laughs) so i'd laugh (laughs) oh my goodness i can't do this and eventually after a couple of days they got less and less and less after a couple of weeks i was hardly breaking sticks at all and now it's one every now and again and my clients usually say oh that's a stick and I've taught everybody this so they're all aware of what their language is. You know, just watch. I can tell people to watch their language, but not in the sense that they can't swear, but they, they can, they must be aware of what they're saying to that subconscious that is listening all the time and will reinforce. If you say, I'm not good at this and I'm no good at that and I always do this wrong, then people will just reinforce that. And we're doing it quite naturally. It's no one's fault. We're not doing it deliberately. It's just what we've learned. So we can unlearn it now. It's never too late. Yeah, because we need to, quite frankly, stop abusing ourselves mentally, don't we? Yes, but it's something we've got used to doing, and it yeah. felt comfortable. Um, you know, it's like a comfortable chair, uncomfortable chair that you sat in with a broken leg. It's all dysfunctional, but you're not used to anything else. And everybody wants to sit in a comfortable chair. And when you know, get the chance to sit in a comfortable chair, it's a new situation where you're getting satisfaction, then it feels odd, and people don't trust anything to last very long. How many times do people say, well, it's all going so well, um, something, bad, something bad's bound to happen, it's going to go wrong, because nobody trusts abundance, no one trusts the good things if they've only experienced the other. So people get so used to experiencing themselves to be critical of themselves, it feels odd to change it. I mean, it's sort of changing your personality for the better, you know, so it works better for you, you work, you're happier, but you um, are threatened by that change, as most people quite naturally will be when it comes to change. I mean, I've, I've learned to love change now, but most people, when they first start to change themselves, in a sense for being better, you know, in, in any sense of the word, whether they educate themselves, whether they try something new, they learn, you know, whatever they're doing to become more, you know, to become bigger or, or whatever, they are automatically going to affect everyone else in quite a few families uh, my my you know uh, i've experienced where the, the family members have said oh please don't change once they've started to see that person grow um it happens quite a lot to people so i'm going to be writing about that in my second book but i would advise that anyone that wants to carry on with that change within themselves carries on um self-supporting with lots of value, lots of self-acceptance and trust in themselves. And what will happen to their people around them is they'll all change for the better and one day look back and say, oh, I'm really glad you did this. But at the time of change, quite often families aren't, they, it unnerves people to feel change is around them. And that is a quite human response. So if we could just get around that with a bit more self-support, a, a keep positive, keep going, don't let go of that, you know, the, the goal that you have in mind to self-improve in whatever area that is. And then people will, um, the whole families, the friends, they will, they will accept them. At first it feels a little bit strange to people, close to people, that are being affected by that change that's happening around them. 
Now you've linked the affirmations in your book. Yes. The little soul affirmation book. Yeah. Up with the chakra system and it's all colourful all the way through it. And I thought it yeah. was lovely. And so how have you designed certain phrases to work with the different chakras? Well, this is interesting because at the time I had to experience I use myself as a template really for all change. Um and uh, on another level, I'd ordered all the reasons why I had to write this book. Um, so it's a it's a workbook. It's, it could be used as a pack of cards and anything really. But it's got lots of feeling. It's got lots of uh, concepts and words in them, covering generally um, each area. So, for instance, um, looking at the first chakra, the, the root chakra, I've got words of um, affirmations like determination, well-being, pain, passion, pleasure slowing down, safety and protection, strength, body, trying too hard. Mm-hmm. All those things, these main areas uh, I've discovered um, are the cause, you know, not having these things, are the cause of having that chakra to be low. So when I first started doing Reiki and I was opening chakras on people, I would, um, independent as I was, I was opening them, I would intuitively know what has shut it down. So over a few years, I got a whole story of concepts and words um, um, say a group of words, a group of concepts that would under, that would open those chakras. You see, so I wrote them all, um, identifying the problem that shut it down, reforming it by using the opposite concept or word, and then em- empowering the person at the end. And that is my formula through every single thing I do because it is so powerful. And so you know, um, if people had a pain on their body, they would go to this book. And they look at the front cover and they go, where's this pain? Okay, I've got a bad back, lower back. So they go to all the red section and there's 10 pages and the borders determined, you know, the pages on the books, you can see the borders on the outside of them is uh, showing you where you are. So you're on 10 pages, the first lot, and you've got the second, obviously, is all the orange and then it goes further. But the, the words are multicolored all the way through because every single affirmation is a tonic to the whole body. But the borders themselves determine where you are on that body so if people use this book as a pack of cards and they open it up and it comes to green green um borders on this particular page i'm looking at um guilt and (laughs) self-judgment um and that is uh really affecting the heart area the heart chakra so um there's one in particular i like one of my favorites from the book well apart from self-worth um but gratitude is affecting that heart chakra and this is extremely good for your immune system so if you'd like, I'd read you that one out. Fabulous. Okay. <clears throat> I'll sit comfortably. Yes. <laughs> it's, only a, it's actually a, an average size affirmation. Some of them are shorter than others. And Anyway, they all do the job. Whether you like it or not, you're being affected. Perfect. <laughs> okay, this is called gratitude. Today, I'm aware of my gratitude for everything wonderful in my life. The smile of a child, the kindness of a stranger, the wonders of nature all fill me with humble gratitude. How amazing life is when I look through these eyes and how important it is to remember to look. As I focus on gratitude, my heart fills with delight and wonder. I feel the entirety of my soulful self immersing into the light of all that brings me joy. When I am grateful, I bring forth a state of happiness that puts a smile on my face and food in my soul. That's the gratitude one. (laughs) Absolutely it's nice, isn't it? It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It is a lovely little book, I have to say. And I, I, you know, I did leave it on the side and it is it is looking uh, very much the worst for wear, I have to say, because everybody <laughs> has picked it up. Yeah. And interestingly enough, it has fallen into passion, pleasure, guilt, self-judgment. It's amazing, and isn't it? It is. Yeah. And I've missed out something I was going to say about this. When I first, as I started to say about I needed the, the relief from all these these feelings that were causing my chakras to shut down, mm. um, I would channel them through my guides. For, um, as, a, as a Reiki master, it's easier. I mean, everyone's got guides, but I'm very much in touch with mine now. And although I didn't understand the concept of those when I first started many years ago, they have been best friends to me now. And at the time when I wrote this book, um, I basically, which was only a few years ago, I'm just looking when I wrote it. <laughs> I don't, it's one of those things, 2011. Um, when I wrote this book, I had a feeling building up, you know, and it was a, it was a very intense feeling, a negative feeling um, in each one of those chakras. I had to experience every single affirmation in the opposite. 
So I would ask my guides. So really, it wasn't me that wrote this book. My guides channeled them. Um, but I would say, give me the solution. I'll ch- channel it through me. So I'd sit on the computer, and I'd intend within 10 minutes I'd have the solution. This is in between my work, so I had to make sure I felt better. Um, so I would sit on the computer, and I would just think, right, this one's called... And they would give me the, the, the absolute affirmation. If I didn't change it, it would be perfect. Mm-hmm. And so now and again, I felt tempted to change a word here or there. But they would tell me and reinforce it. No, it's better to do it this way. And one particular one that I think is really evident of my guide's channeling, which is quite funny, really, is in the middle section of the book. It's on the yellow section, and it's called Don't Take It Personally. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, a lot of us do, sensitive people do, but generally we can change that. And this was a particularly hard time for me that week when I, I was suffering a lot of that, don't take it personally. And in the middle of this, um, this affirmation, there's a word that I've never, ever heard about. Now, I didn't have much schooling and I didn't really have a, a very great, good educa- education as such. I moved around the country a lot like a gypsy as a child and I didn't really have, had took years off of school. So I wasn't really educated to a lot of um, English. So I'm, th- this book is really beautiful as a result of it because I, I'm not exactly educated in the conventional sense. Um, but I'm, all my education has come after that. So anyway, I'll get back to the point. The word I'm talking about is personified. So um, it was um, any injustice aimed towards me is simply the other person's own pain personified. This is in the sentence in the, sen- in the middle of the affirmation. And I got to personified. I thought, what does that mean? Hang on. And so I left the computer, went and got the dictionary, read the word and thought, oh, that's really good. It means um, a person's pain put into form. It means put into form. How brilliant. So I went back and finished off the affirmation. Thank my guides very much. Used the affirmation for the next couple of hours, read it a few times, and voila, my center felt much better. <laughs> and I was feeling much, I never had that problem again. Um, certainly if I kept using the affirmation, it would evolve me so I'd suffer less from that. <laughs> oh, you did ask. How fantastic. <laughs> I know. So I really channeled it. I thank my guides very much for it. They've done me a great service and they're continuing to do so. Beautiful. So, yes. Nancy, how do people get hold of you? How do they find you on the internet, get onto one of your oh. workshops or even have a session with you? <laughs> oh, bless you. Um, right. Well, I'm working. I work from home, St. Austell. Um, I do this during the day when I'm not a singer at night I work with sound as well so I sing um, so I do quite a lot of singing in the evenings and the weekends um, I work at shows doing both those things I work doing workshops I do um, um, singing at local shows um, that can be found some, in, basically Facebook's probably the best thing to catch me on uh, so that's Nancy Finch St. Austell as an S-T-A-I-N-T St. Austell um, and you'll find me uh, talking about almost like a, um, a, a you know a diary of what I'm up to there. Um, I've got Facebook email that's Nancy Finch at hotmail dot co dot uk and my website www.innervisions dot me dot uk. It's really Facebook and emails I'm doing quite a lot of, and I'm working now at St Austell College. Um, teaching second and third level Reiki. That's just a recent thing. We're waiting for more people. Um, hopefully then I should be running the courses from there on a weekly basis. It would be lovely if people either want to learn Reiki with me, either at the college in a small group of people or, or, my, or at home here. I work from my home uh, teaching in, in small groups as well. So it's really up to the person if they want the college environment or the home environment. It's up to them. It's very, they both offer pluses and minuses really so yes (sighs) have I exhausted you (laughs) I'm very passionate about my work so you know it's brilliant uh, thank you it's been lovely I have to say I'm very grateful to have been speaking to the gorgeous Nancy Finch today (laughs) and um, she runs cosmic parties I have to say and uh, if nothing else order her yeah I do as I say I do I do um, I do workshops but I love to do um, motivational speaking anyway all over the country so if anyone's interested um, I'd be very happy to talk on subjects like relationships fear etc etc and I would hope to do more so on this on this show as well Thank you very much for coming on Food for Thought, Nancy. Oh, thank you, Debbie. It's been wonderful. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, thank you. 